Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. These are the tire pressure monitoring sensors uh, for BMW bikes, the RT in particular is where these came from. And I did a previous video on how to replace the batteries in these because the batteries don't last forever. Inside is a standard watch battery. It's a CR2032 watch battery. But the trouble is that the batteries are epoxied in place. So it's not an easy matter just to pop them in and pop them out. You have to do a little bit of work. Now the previous video that I did is still relevant, but I thought I'd update it uh, with some new information and try to make it a little bit more concise. Now these sensors are mounted inside the tire. So when you do a tire change, it would be a good time to change these if the batteries are getting low. And when the batteries do go bad, usually you'll see a little dashed line on the dash display which indicates that it's no longer receiving a signal. Now these are registered on the bike itself so the computer on the bike needs to see a particular number uh, and register each one of these sensors. Now you can register up to four sensors simultaneously so you can have two pairs if you will and that's what a lot of people do so you have a pair with fresh batteries when you change the tires you swap them in and then you swap the other pair when you change the tires again or you can delete the registered code uh, in the bike for two of them and replace them with new ones if you wanted to as well. These are very expensive from BMW, over $200 which is crazy. Now when you replace the batteries I recommend getting this style which has uh, tabs that are pre-soldered onto the battery rather than just a standard CR2032. These will make it easier, as, well, as I'll show you, uh, to replace because you can solder a little wire onto the tabs that already exist on these batteries. If you try to solder those wires directly to the battery, it's possible to do, but it's not easy to do. Now these batteries are used in certain games, so these are easy to find online with the tabs. However, uh, this is not a big name brand, it's just some Chinese knockoff. So before you install one of these batteries, I recommend testing it with a meter to make sure it has full voltage. Another thing you're going to need is a GS911 or the Motoscan app with a cable, either one, uh, to register your sensors uh, with the bike computer. Now if they're already registered, it's not a problem. So if you're taking the old ones out, that came with the bike originally and just replacing the batteries, then you don't need to re-register. However, if you're adding new sensors or different sensors, then you will need to re-register and you need one of these devices to talk to the computer to make that happen. And finally, you need a way to wake these sensors up. Now again, if you're reusing the original sensors, this is probably not necessary, but if you're installing new ones or sometimes when you're reinstalling the old ones, you need to wake the sensors up. And this is a very inexpensive device to do so. Basically, you just hold the button on, hold it near the sensor, and uh, it will awaken the sensor so that it will communicate with the, the uh, computer on the bike. If you don't do this, it is possible to wake it up in other ways, including just going for a ride after a period or inflating the tire to regular pressure and then rapidly depressurizing the tire. Either one of those can wake these up, but it's not perfectly consistent. So getting a device like this uh, makes it simple and it's not very expensive. Now people report varying experiences with removing this epoxy. Some people find the texture very soft and pretty easy to remove. Other people find the texture very hard and difficult to remove. When I did the previous video, uh, it was very difficult to remove. I really just used a wood chisel, a small one, and just basically scraped away at it layer by layer until I got it down to where I needed it. Another method described by a friend of mine, Steve Campbell, in uh, the UK, uh, is to use heat with a soldering iron or something like that, and he was able to remove it fairly quickly doing that, so we'll try that. And another thing you can think about is using a drill, either a handheld or a drill press, and carefully drilling out uh, the first few layers of this. And then when you get closer to the battery, you switch to hand work and, and be more cautious about it. So first let's give this a try. I have a old soldering iron here. It's nothing I care too much about. Obviously if plastic gets on that heated tip, it's gonna mess it up for soldering. You could wipe that off later. But let's just see if anything happens at all. I'm just gonna hold this to the uh, epoxy and see what we see. Move slowly. Uh, the heat does seem to make some difference. That would be easier than trying to 
scrape this by hand cold. Put the sensor up to a stop like this so you can put a little bit more pressure on it without worrying about your fingers. But again, it's, it's going to be a slow process here. Stuff's coming off, but it's just going to take time. So the other thing I would recommend, rather than just sit there forever and doing that, is to take a drill and just drill a series of holes here, not too deep, but enough to get started, and that will really speed the process along. So I've mounted a Forstner style bit in my drill press here. If you've never seen a Forstner bit, a bigger version looks like this. They drill a flat bottomed hole, and they're fairly easy to control. In other words, they don't grab and, and bite very easily. So this would be an ideal bit to try to use in this situation. So I have a smaller one mounted in the drill press. And what I can do is hold the sensor here and push it up against the drill bit carefully. And that will give me more control. And it will also stop it from grabbing and, and, and turning on me if I do catch. So let's give this a shot. All right, so that makes very short work of this, uh, and I mean, you can see the shavings are everywhere. All right, elapsed time has been about five minutes, so I used a combination of the wood chisel to get down. You can see the round battery here now. You can also see where I just started to drill into it, and there's a a tab here uh, which connects the battery to the electronics and I did damage that a little bit but it's not going to be a big deal because I'm not going to put this battery back the same way it went in I'm going to do something differently I did go back to uh, the soldering iron and I found that worked pretty well especially when I just need to remove little pieces around the edge of the battery and I don't want to put too much pressure on it so uh, thanks to Steve Campbell for that trick because that is working best for me at this stage of the game so I have a little bit more to do here and now I'm just going to be real cautious as I get to the edge here because I need to pry that battery out and I'll just use a pick to do that when I get a little bit more of this stuff out of the way okay I'm, I'm testing the limits of the camera here but I really need to point this out and it's very very small so when I took this battery out, the original battery, there was also a tab on the bottom. And as a result, I pried this area off the circuit board. But don't panic. You can still save this. So this battery is no good. We don't care about that. But what we do care about is getting a battery connection to the circuit board. So we have two connections we have to make. This tab right here, which remains, in other words, I was able to save that without much, too much trouble, even though I actually drilled through it a little bit, so that's okay. And then I dug this out a little more, but where the pick is pointing right now is just a little piece of solder right there, right? That's the connection to the circuit board for the battery. So as long as we can get to that, not a big deal, we're going to take a tiny little wire, I'll put some flux on that, and I'll solder the wire to that little spot right there and then we'll have a lead we can work with we don't have to worry about this anymore same thing with this tab right here I'm gonna solder a little wire to it uh, and then we have we can work with that wire rather than having to worry about that lead so if you get a little rough and or you, you know you slip or whatever and that little tab comes off don't worry about it keep digging and this little thing right here is where we need to attach the wire now let me just update this is the second sensor and for whatever reason, the epoxy on this one came out much easier at about a third of the time. So I can't explain it, but just be aware that it's not always as difficult as I showed you on the first one. But this battery being in better shape when I got it out does point out one issue with this particular one, which is that this tab on the bottom of the battery is soldered on. And the top is soldered on as well. So because of that, there's really no way to get this battery out without damaging, you know, where it's connected here to the circuit card. So you're going to have to do the same thing on both of these. Clear out this epoxy here and solder it on the wire directly to the circuit card. Now the first two sensors that I did this on my previous video, this was not the case. So there are internal differences uh, between these sensors depending on the year or who made them. I'm not sure what.
As we used to say back in the Cold War 80s, trust but verify. Even though this is a new battery, that doesn't mean it's good. So I'm just going to verify that I have full voltage. And we get 3.26, so that's definitely a good battery. You have the negative side here, that needs to connect to the tab that I'm pointing to right now. So that tab is on the bottom, the way I fitted this, and it just barely sticks out there. So I need to trim this wire back to a length that allows me just to solder right onto that tab right there. On the positive side, um, that's connected to the top here. And again, this red wire is the positive, and I need to solder it to this tab here. This second one also soldered much easier. Everything went together easier. So what can I tell you? Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. All right, I'm just going to take a piece of electrical tape and fold it up. I'm just going to place that on top like that. I'm just going to take electrical tape and wrap around the sensor. And I, there's one special thing you got to understand here. I'm going to show you in a second. Let me just get this started. All right, the new battery is wrapped with electrical tape. On the opposite side, when you turn this over, there's two things you got to understand. You, you don't want to cover this metal strip right here or this little port right here. The little port right here is what uh, the sensor uses to measure the pressure, so you certainly don't want to cover that. And this metal strip right here is what the sensor uses to measure temperature because this sensor does adjust for temperature. So make sure you just leave that uncovered, both of these, with the electrical tape and you'll be fine. Now, how do you know if it's working or not? Well, I'm going to refer you to that previous video that I made. There'll be a link in the comments section because there I showed you how to register this on your bike. But just so you understand the concept, as long as you have this physically close to the bike, you can test it before you put the tire back on. You use either this device or one like it, and that will wake the sensor up and you'll be able to see on your GS911 or your MotoScan app whether it shows up. In other words, it will show up on the screen that it's recognized and registered. If it doesn't, then you may have a problem and you may need to re-solder or change the battery or something else. But as long as that shows up, you're in good shape. And then when you mount this, um, you know, just be careful not to slice the tape or anything like that. But I've not had any problems long term with this solution.